Hi everyone, it's Dawn and I hope you're having a fantastic day. Well, have you ever thought about, you know what, instead of retiring on land, I'm going to retire and live on a cruise ship. It all sounds great, but there are some drawbacks and some pitfalls. So recently there was an article that a lot of papers are running with about an accountant who decided that she was going to retire with her husband and they were going to live on a cruise ship because it was cheaper than living on land. But if you read the article, a lot of the times they're also staying on land with friends in between cruises. So it's not a fair estimate. Now somebody that we you might have heard of, Super Mario, who has retired on a cruise ship and living on cruise ships. And he uh, estimates it costs him around $75,000 US to live on a cruise ship year round. And if you price uh, retirement living, it can come up pretty close to that as well. So a cruise ship sounds great. They make your beds, there's you know dining all over the ship, there's entertainment on board, and you're traveling the world. Not exactly. In order to live on a cruise ship at that rate, Super Mario, he says he had to live in an interior cabin. And he had to choose a cruise line that once you get enough perks into the um, the club, you get 50% second passenger rates when you book. So he saves 50% all the time on his two for one. So basically he pays 150% instead of 200% of what it costs to stay in the cabin. And then he also mentioned that he, you know what, he's got to sail 80% of the time in the Caribbean because that's where the cruises are cheapest. He doesn't go to Alaska, he doesn't go to Japan, Australia, he doesn't go to Iceland. And a lot of the other times he's doing repositioning cruises because they're cheaper as well. So if you think that you're going to go to all these exotic ports, like you're going to Rome and Barcelona, you're going to Norway, you're going to Iceland, you're going to Bora Bora, yeah, chances are you're not. In fact, the majority of the time you're in the Caribbean visiting the same ports over and over and over again. And he also has to jump from one ship to another depending on the rates and when that ship is leaving the area. Sometimes a ship goes into service and then it leaves to a different area to cover off the west coast of the United States or to head up and do Canadian cruises. Whatever's cheapest is what he has to do. I checked out some prices uh, doing the exact same thing, not living in an inside cabin, but living in a balcony cabin and staying on one ship the majority of the time would cost almost double, $150,000 US for the one person or two. If you're, if you're going with uh, <laughs> two people, then it would be around two, uh, sorry, $175,000 uh, when you count in all the other things. That's not including, by the way, your drinks. That's not including your Wi-Fi. That's not including uh, gratuities. That's not including a lot of things on the ship. And it's still, now if that still sounds great to you, that it's still better than being in a retirement community or a retirement home, uh, you also have to meet certain criteria to even try and do it. And let's be honest, the cruise lines really don't like people on board for that length of time because it, they're not set up to manage a person's life. They're, they're there to enjoy week-long, two-week-long, three-week-long vacations and then switch over to new people. When somebody's there all the time, they can be more demanding, they can you know, develop medical issues, they can need to see doctors more often, dental, all things like that. So there's a lot more involved. Now let me tell you some of those pitfalls. But before I do, let me just invite you to hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already so you can keep up to date with all things cruising, including things like this.
retiring on a cruise ship. So what would the pitfalls be? Well, first of all, some countries, you have to be in the country a certain amount of time or you lose your citizenship. Or you can even lose your medical. For instance, in Canada, if you're out of the country more than six months, you can lose your medical card. You cannot have free medical. <laughs> you have to apply for it again and it can be a real hassle. Also, try and get insurance for more than three, four months at a time. Try and get insurance for a 250 you know, day cruise like Royal Caribbean has their world cruise. You might be able to get it through the cruise line, but that's going to be expensive. If you try and get it privately, try and get it that length of time, you're going to have a hard time. And some people say, well, I have yearly insurance, but read your yearly insurance because your yearly insurance only covers you out of the country for a certain amount of time. And if you're out of the country for the entire year, you could be out of luck with your insurance. Also, you have to be in relatively good physical and mental and overall general health because cruise lines have medical facilities, yes, but they're not there to treat people who have to have any kind of daily procedures, uh, insulin shots, there's no dental on a cruise ship, There's uh, they don't have, uh, you know, things to look after people's heart, they don't have cancer treatment things on a cruise ship. They don't have that. They're meant to look after emergencies to get you to a hospital or people who are seasick, that kind of stuff. And if you have ongoing medical issues that you need looked after, then a cruise ship is definitely not for you. Other things to consider, how about loneliness? And you're gonna say to yourself, Dom, what do you mean loneliness? You're on a cruise ship. There's two, three, four thousand people plus the crew. Yes, there is but they leave the next week. So you, you think you might, oh, there's lots of people to talk to. Yes, but you never really develop friendships. You never re really develop anything close. And if you're going on the cheap and trying to save as much money as possible, you're also on an inside cabin, a tiny inside cabin all the time. So you don't own a lot of things, you have the same clothes, you have to do the laundry in the facility or have laundry done. There's no place to store anything. It can be, it can be very, very lonely. Uh, you, you have people leaving all the time. Even crew members will leave at some point, even if you become close friends. And they don't usually, you might be friendly with a cruise member, but you don't become close friends because they're not allowed to fraternize too, too much with the passengers. And even if you live on a cruise ship, you're still a passenger. How about having the same menu for a year? Because you're only eating in the main dining. You're not paying for specialty dining. That's extra money. Unless you have extra money, you're, you're eating. So you're eating hamburgers and hot dogs and pizza, or you're eating the same menu in the buffet or you're eating the same menu in the main dining hall. There's no variety for yourself and you don't just decide, you know what, today I'm going to make myself some French onion soup because that's what I'm going to have today because you don't cook it. Somebody else cooks it. So there are things out there that you like in particular, you're not going to be able to get anymore. You're just not going to enjoy it as much. You also don't get off and, and tour around to the exotic locations because you got to pay for those excursions and <laughs> God forbid you miss the ship coming back. That's more money out of your pocket. So most people tend to just walk off, do some shopping, get back on or use the free Wi-Fi when they get ashore and then get back on the ship. Most people do that who are trying to live on the cruise ships because it can be really, really expensive. And how about this? A lot of people say, but think of the entertainment on board. Entertainment every night. That's true. But if you're living on a cruise ship, think if they show one show, the exact same show for a year every week for seven day cruises, that means you're going to see that same show 52 times. And how many times will you see that guest entertainer 
come back on how many times will you see that same comedian doing the exact same act during that year-long process and that's only one year imagine staying for five six or more years how many times you would see that show at some point you would just stay in your room the majority of the time so there are a lot of pitfalls it sounds glamorous and it can be it can absolutely be glamorous if you have the money to do it right if you're not trying to do it on the exact cheap if you have a ton of money in the bank and you can be in a balcony or a suite that enhances your experience even better. If you can afford to have the Wi-Fi on every single cruise, if you can afford to, to just take that one ship and head to the Med, head to Iceland, head to where you want to go, it makes a big difference. But that costs way, way more than that bottom line in all those articles that you're reading. Those people who say they're living on a cruise ship for $45 a day. No, you're not. In the majority of cases, you're not. And even them, the people in the article, admit they weren't because some of the days they're staying with friends in the different cities waiting for the next cruise ship. How many days? They didn't say. So if you're staying five, six, seven days waiting for another cruise ship to arrive there, that's five or six, seven days you're not paying for on the ship. And if you do that five or six times a year, that's six, seven, eight weeks worth of cruising that you're not paying for. So think long and hard really do your research find out what the drawbacks are find out what you will lose find out exactly what those costs are going to be and costs can still keep going up and also a thing a lot of people forget is you got to plan this well in advance you just don't decide today i'm going to retire and i'm going on that ship tomorrow and i'm going to live on that ship if you're booking seven week cruise like a seven day cruise you gotta book 52 of them in a row and try and get there right away because you want to try and stay in the exact same cabin can you imagine living every year like for a year and having to move every single week with all your stuff even though it's not a lot, it's still a pain. And it's disembarking and embarking and you're stuck with moving into suitcases again. You're basically living out of a suitcase in a small cabin at those kind of rates. As glamorous it sounds, unless you have the money, it's not. You're better off looking at one of those cruise ships that have apartments for rent and apartments for sale on board that you pay two, three million for and then you pay monthly the keep up cost and those ships go all over the place and those ships have everything included at that rate but if you're going on the cheap it's going to be surprising the more inconveniences of living on a cruise ship than living on land it's actually a lot more restrictive than a lot of people think. Well, I hope you appreciate this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Wanna see more tips, more tricks, more travel blogs from around the world? Hit that subscribe button. Till next time, have yourself a safe and a great vacation.